Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome back to Rhino Ventures Outdoors. And I'm on an adventure right now. I'm driving to Colville, Utah to pick up my new teardrop camper. I started out this morning from Arkansas at about 4.30 and I've been on the road a few hours and I'm in the middle of Oklahoma somewhere. I'm on the Indian Nation Turnpike heading toward Henrietta, I believe. Never driven through this part of the country before and it's a nice little change of scenery. But anyway, got quite the journey ahead of me. I'm gonna to try to make it as far as Colby, Kansas this evening and then uh, the rest of the way to Colville tomorrow. And uh, I'll check in with you from time to time. Thanks for watching. The adventure resumes this morning. I just left Colby, Kansas a couple hours ago. I'm about 75 miles east of Denver. I won't quite go into Denver before I kind of take a turn north and head up toward Laramie, Wyoming. But I got about seven and a half hours left to drive today. I'll probably get to Colville, Utah around three or four o'clock this afternoon and gives me a lot of time to kind of unwind and figure out what's going on around there. Looking forward to it. Tomorrow is uh, camper pickup day. Can't wait to get it. And uh, I'll give you some updates as we uh, go along. abandoned you mid-trip there when I was hauling the trailer back to Arkansas from Utah but I did make it safely back a couple of days ago but uh, at the end of the travel day I was too weary and stressed out about a couple of things to actually work on the video and to give you the tour I promised you but now that I have it home here uh, I got time to show you what I've done with it to get it all rigged up for camping and give you the, the grand tour of the 2022 Escapod original topo so let's take a look around. All right, we'll just start here in the front. Uh, one of the upgrade options was a fully articulating hitch, and this is just the trailer tongue end of it, but it'll, uh, it'll pivot 360 degrees uh, all the way around, you know. So if you're going over some rough terrain, you know, where the truck's tilting one way and the trailer tilts another, it's not like a ball hitch where you have to worry about it popping off of there. So that's that. Uh, here's one issue that I did have when I was trying to get back home and that harness right there that umbilical was too short didn't have enough slack in it so the plug kept coming unsnugged from the seven pin receptacle on the back of my truck and was causing my lights to be intermittent and uh, I kind of rigged it up with zip ties and made my way all the way back to Arkansas from Utah that way and miraculously did not get a ticket so uh, pretty happy about that but 
I'm working on getting it fixed. I've already replaced that plug right there, and I'm just waiting on a little extension cord to show up via Amazon. Okay, so that brings us to the tongue box that I had added to the trailer. Uh, it's a big, big dude. Uh, I believe it's aluminum, and it's powder-coated and all that good stuff. And uh, on top of it, I had them add a 95-liter Rome case, and I'll show you what I'm going to use that for. I'm going to use it as a catch-all for all my camping tools and things like that that tend to get dirty that I don't want to take inside the camper. It straps down to the top of the tongue box. You can kind of see these little rings right here. But I want to come up with a more permanent solution to make that thing theft-proof because it would be pretty easy just to cut a strap and take the whole box. And it wasn't cheap. Okay, in this end of the tongue box is the battery compartment. And because I have some other add-ons here that I'll go over in a second, uh, Escapod recommended I get the double battery option. It was an upgrade. Uh, it's still a 12-volt system, but these are two 6-volt batteries wired in. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember you electrical engineers tell me parallel or series. <clears throat> I didn't do well in circuits class. And, uh, and there's a little bit more room to store something there, uh, probably something non-metallic. We'll have to give that some thought. All right. Uh, next to that is a little tube. It's got an end cap on it. And it goes all the way through to the other side of the trailer. And Escapod gives you a little tool so you can take that off. Anyway, you could roll up a rug or maybe store fishing rods or something like that in there. <clears throat> I'll have to consider what I want to do with that. Um, there's some other nice little things that I'm not going to go over all of it. Like, well, I'll go over this one. Uh, this thing right here is a little magnet that they put on there that holds the door open when you open it up. I'm not going to open this one. I'm going to show you the other side when I get around there. Thing's pretty dirty right now, but it's a camping trailer, isn't it supposed to be? That's a Rome awning that will deploy out to the side here and keep you in the shade and out of the rain if you need to do that while you're lounging around drinking your camp beverage. All right, got good uh, coated bumpers here that you can stand on to get up to. The stuff on top if you need to you know load things up on the roof rack or whatever uh, nice general grabber tires uh, 16 inch wheels and uh, I forget the diameter of the of the whole tire but they're bigger than the ones on my truck pretty nice I also got an upgraded suspension that's uh, independent the wheels are independent of each other and I'm not going to show that to you because I don't feel like climbing underneath the trailer not sure you'd be interested in it anyway. You can go to their website and check it out if you want to. All right, moving to the back. Uh, this is where the galley is, and uh, mounted on the galley is a very dirty solar panel right now <laughs> that I need to wash so that it works a little bit better. Um, and I just got it titled today. Don't look at that number. I don't know how to blur it out. I'm not even sure why you're supposed to. But uh, <laughs> before I open up the galley, let me squat down here and show you. It's got leveling jacks, <clears throat> one on each side. I only have that one down there deployed. That's the downhill side to try to level the trailer out here while I got it parked in the driveway. But they're pretty rugged, and you deploy those using a little tool they give you. And there's a the little nut right there in the middle of that ring. Pretty easy. Oh, uh, one other thing about that solar panel, you can take it off the trailer and it's got an extension cord that comes with it and you can kind of deploy it out in the near the trailer in a field or something if you uh, need to get it in the sunshine if, if your camper's parked in the shade. So let's open this up. Watch the tree here. So this is the galley and I don't have the cabinet face on right now. I'll show you where that is in a second. Uh, that one right there is laying on the counter. And it usually covers up that cubby right there. Uh, let me go ahead and put that up there so you can get the idea. Uh, 
that's the the general idea right there and there's a bigger one for that right there i'll show you in a second but there's the two burner propane stove and you got a couple of drawers here for you know utensils uh, i still need to go buy some stuff and the bigger drawer i'm going to put my cookware in i have transferred all that stuff from my old camping box and uh, one of my favorite things is the Dometic fridge and it's on a slider. Let me get that slid out for you. And that slider is supposed to hold 500 pounds. I can't imagine I'll ever get 500 pounds of stuff in that Dometic. Maybe I'll want to sit on it or something. Uh, no, probably not. It's going to be really nice not to have to depend on ice to keep all my, my stuff cold. Uh, this thing's also Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable, so you can control the temperature and monitor its performance on your phone and all that stuff if that's the kind of thing you're into. I just want to keep my food cold. I don't want to have to play with it that way. It also comes with an adapter cord. You can plug it into the 110 in your house and get it pre-chilled and stuff before you leave on your camping trip. It might save you a little power. All right, so that's about it for the galley. Uh, sneak around the corner here. There's the propane tank. Uh, what you, I think those are, what, 11 pounds? And uh, that provides propane to the stove I just showed you, as well as this guy, which is a on-demand water heater. And I tried it out yesterday, and it does. It gets it hot instantly, and uh, it's going to be nice to be able to wash dishes, take a shower, and that sort of thing. The camper has a 20-gallon tank, which should be more than enough for most of my camping trips. There's uh, the other cabinet face, so it has a dual purpose. It also serves as a table, and most people use this as a dishwashing station in conjunction with that water heater that I just showed you. Uh, both sides also have little receivers there, so you can put accessories i see that there's little you know gas grills and charcoal grills and that kind of thing that you can put in there there's also one in the back if you want to put a bike rack on there uh, those are my water lines the input and output to fill the tank as well as to uh, get water out of there if you need a, to hook up the hose to the hot water thingamabob and here is the inside uh, see i've got an awning on this side as well and let me just climb in here and show you around. I might get sleepy and have to take a nap. Uh, but everything is lined with this beautiful birch wood. And uh, it's got the Max Air fan up in the top. That's an exhaust fan only. Uh, but it works really well getting airflow in here if you've got the windows open and the doors. And uh, then I've got cabinetry back here. And... Uh, I don't have anything in that one, but this is where you might put your clothes and things like that. Uh, these middle ones here are designed to work together. If I open up the bottom one, I'm going to put the camera down while I do this, then I'll bring you back. There we go. The top one kind of nestles onto the bottom one, and it's got a little ledge right here so you can put a laptop or a tablet and uh, snuggle up in here and watch a movie if you're so inclined. i got some towels and clothes stored back there already, uh, but really, really nice cabinetry. I love the way it smells in here. I wonder how long that smell will last before it gets replaced by stinky camping smells. Uh, a couple of light switches over there. The one on the right is the porch light, so the lights that illuminate outside each door here. So you can find your way in the dark if you get out. And then uh, the one on the left is the remote control for the internal lighting. And uh, it's kind of neat. It lets you vary the brightness. Uh, it's got presets for 20% all the way up to 120% increments. Let's see if I can turn it on here and see if you can tell even tell any difference. Yeah, you can tell. Let me go 100%. So. But the light strip itself is actually behind the headboard. But 
with the curved shape of the camper, it really does a good job of diffusing and spreading that light throughout the throughout the camper. So I really like the lighting in here. Turn that off. And then uh, let me show you the what's behind me real quick. So this is the little angled headboard, and you got storage behind that and so I got some a hammock and an electric blanket first aid kit and all my trailer paperwork is in there and some of your electrical boxes are also in here uh, the battery charger and fuse boxes back there somewhere and then up top you've got these nice leather lined places to put stuff like your phone and maybe your jewelry or cup of water etc and then on either side you've got USB ports to charge your electronics and this side also has a uh, 12 volt like cigarette lighter type plug all right let me close that up and then above all that is the stargazer window so while you're laying in here slumbering you can stare at the stars up through that window it's pretty dirty right now but you can stare up at the trees and that's pretty much it for the inside we're almost done let me get back out okay around to the other side of the tongue box you'll like this one I've got another 500 pound slide out and on this one I've got the big 45 liter, I think, Yeti cooler in navy blue. And uh, well, you guys know what Yeti coolers look like. Oh, I'm not going to bore you with that. We'll just put that away. If you opted to not take the cooler with you on your camping trip, you have all that tongue box for carrying other kind of cargo. But I'm not too worried about that because I've got the entire bed of my pickup truck for that sort of thing. Oh, I should also mention that that tongue box also has a 12 volt port so that I could, if I wanted to, oh, it's actually a 65. If I wanted to, I could move the Dometic into the tongue box and the Yeti into the galley and vice versa. Pretty nice to have the options there. So that is it for the camper tour. Sorry I kind of abandoned the effort while I was uh, traveling, but I will uh, talk about other things that I love and less than love about it as I start using it. Uh, as soon as I get the umbilical situation fixed, I'm gonna start using it. I didn't buy it to leave it in the driveway. More to come on Rhino Ventures Outdoors. Thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you out there on the campground or in the woods soon.